And here we are. Officially live. Officially live. Happy Friday, everyone. Happy Friday. Are you superstitious out there? Some people believe in Friday the 13th. Oh, gosh, like don't that. even start. Don't even start. Oh, I'm not superstitious. I actually believe that Friday the 13th is a good, good luck day. You may be the only one. I may be the only one. You may be the only one. Is it a, is it a foreign thing? Is is what yeah. what is it? Uh, yeah. Is it because yeah, I'm sure. not from here? Yeah. We'll we'll go with that one. Okay, but I've been here a long long time. You've been in the states For longer long than I've been alive. I just don't believe in superstitions. I guess it's I good. think that it's you good. create your own luck. Mm-hmm. Agreed, agreed. Hey everyone, welcome to Friday Night Live on Tweet Talks. Who is here? You guys that clicked into view, um, say hello. Say hello in the comments. Our first two guests, um, Dwayne Parker and Teresa Gales, they are already in the studio, so we are going to bring them bring them in right at eight o'clock, um, and we're gonna get going. And talking yeah, I guess to him so. Because yes. this has been uh, quite a week <clears throat> of some some really great interviews um, with with some new friends. Let's say they're new friends. New friends. Now now we're um, yeah we we stay with... in touch. We want to make sure that yeah they get the most that you know I watch uh, the movies. Mm -hmm. You know I've been been watching. Yeah. <laughs> to one o'clock in the morning sometimes, and. Um, I watched his movie last night and this was, morning again. There was a lot of um, a lot of material to cover. Yeah, so, so. a lot of action. I mean, right from the get go. Yeah. But we're going to talk to him about it. Yeah. OK, yeah. so why don't we bring him in? So Dwayne He's, Parker is actor, director, producer and writer of Night 7 Productions. And Teresa Gales, we also have on at this time. She is a script writer. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name of the project. We're going to bring her in and let her do it. <laughs> Okay. Hi, Daryl. Daryl says, let's roll. All right. Hey, Daryl. So we're bringing in Dwayne and Teresa right now. Hey, Dwayne and Teresa. Hello there. How are you? Welcome. Good. To How are you? Good. Thanks for having us. Oh, yeah. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. I was watching a movie this morning. I watched it last night. And right from the get-go, right from the get-go, you know, it was action right away yes that's how i like to do it <laughs> and then then i thought you know that there's going to be some action then it's going to slow down but it didn't well it is the urban action showcase and expo so you know give us the action give us the just action. get going and get going to the end you know i i practice martial art and just watching the movie i was exhausted by the end yeah <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, I just want to say I'm happy to be in a room with two talented hosts here because I was looking at the stuff that you guys do, and um, you know, I, this is the first time I've I've ever spoken to a Guinness World Record holder. And, Wait, you know, whoa! <laughs> you you gotta teach me how to do those planks, man. Like I, I like I don't even know how you balance yourself. I was looking at that. That's incredible. Do you still hold that record? Yes, I was. I Actually, I was the first one in the world to do it, so I only had to do one. <laughs> so, so listen, Teresa. What they're talking about is um, my husband did this planche push-up with his feet off the ground. He was basically parallel to the ground, so his feet were hovering over. And and Dwayne, there were strings on his feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> so, Teresa. Yes. Tell me something about your script. How do you pronounce it? It's Nicosi, King of New York. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was. I wanted to be yes. sure. Yes. Yes. All right. So tell us a little bit about Nicosi, King of New York. So it's a, it's a, it's kind of um, it's a gangster movie. It's about a crime mob. Um, mm -hmm. This guy Nicosi is head of a um, a syndicate in New York. And what happened was before him, his father was this was the head of it. He ran the streets of New York 20 years ago, but he was shot and he um, was shot and he, he's in a coma. So he was he remained in a coma for like 20 years. So while he was in a coma, 
his son was out wreaking havoc in the streets of New York and, you know, he was the man and whatever the case may be. But 20 years later, the father wakes up from the coma and realizes, and he's thinking that he's been only asleep for a day. Actually, he's been asleep for 20 years. So he goes back to think, hey, I'm, I'm back. You know, who I'm going to get the people that shot me and they've all been dead or locked up or whatever. But he doesn't realize that things have changed. And then he comes to find out not only that is the person that is his competition is his son that he didn't know he had because he was in the coma. Wow. Yes. And so once he finds out, um, they get together and then he really realizes this is no longer 20 years ago. This is 2020. Um, you know, what I used back then is not working with the young guys in the streets or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so he decides to, hey, I'm going to back up, son. And I'm, I'm going to go go with you and I'm going to school you on how to do this the old school way. And so after they get together and they wind up, you know, everybody that they love has been dead because of, you know, the crimes and things that they're in. And they realize, you know, his son, um, he realizes that, hey, I've been gone for 20 years, but this is what I come back to. And I still cannot share, you know, a father son relationship with you because what I'm doing and what you're doing, it's not worth it because everybody is, you know, is dead or gone and, and we've caused it. And so they have a fun father and son bond. And then, you know, and, and he tries to turn his life uh, around, but then tragedy happens and it's too late. Yeah. Now, Duane, tell me about your movie. How, how did you come up with the concept? Oh, well, um, actually, um, looking online and just basically my, you know, real life experience. So um, Vex is about two men from different sides of the law who end up um, sharing a similar trauma and they go out to seek revenge, uh, ultimately finding that forgiveness might be their only salvation. So with Vex, I would you know be browsing online as usual and i saw some articles revolving around people who actually forgave their assailants mm -hmm. uh, you know like for example there was a mother whose son was killed by somebody and she ends up forgiving him in the mm -hmm. court and you know if you look online you'll see multiple instances of this and so that just made me very curious as to um, that, just that whole concept. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to kind of share and make a movie that dealt with forgiveness, even though action movies usually revolve around revenge. revenge right, right, right. right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I also wanted to um, touch on the school to prison pipeline. Uh, in my nine to five, I'm a guidance counselor in the high school. Oh. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I personally experienced sometimes um, where, for those that don't know, the school to prison pipeline is uh, when minor infractions are criminalized and the kids that are usually punished end up on a, on a whole roller coaster into the juvie system and whatever. They're usually isolated, suspended for long periods of time. And um, because they're out of school for so long, the streets start calling. And then, uh, you know, that influence becomes stronger in school because they're basically pushed out of that, um, that realm. So uh, kids that are, you know, of color are usually the predominantly the ones that are affected. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I, I just wanted to kind of um, put that into the film because I believe anything that you do, you should have some kind of moral or, or something right. uh, to it. So uh, that was where the inspiration came from. Mm. And that was there was a message in the movie. Yeah, love that, love that. And your uh, and Vex was nominated for um, nominated and won for best urban action in the new media category. That's correct. Yes, and I just want to thank um, everyone at Urban Action Showcase and Expo, mm -hmm. Demetrius, uh, even you guys for just uh, mm -hmm. looking at the film, accepting it, and uh, it really made me feel good to have created something and it be understood. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Teresa, it looks like yours was um, yours was a finalist. And yes. what, what category was it in? Was it in the script writing category? Yes, yes it was in the script writing category, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it was, uh, um, 
as Dwayne is saying, it was a great opportunity just to be nominated, just to be a part of it, to be, to be accepted in the film festival. It was a great honor. And then I, I even had a chance to do um, a table. Um, I mean, I, I had a chance for us um, to do a, um, uh, to pitch, to, to pitch it. Great. So, yes. So I, I, I had some good and I had a couple of producers that was interested in the script. So that was just the opportunity right there in itself. I mean, even if nothing wow. comes out of it, at least someone was interested. So at least, you know, you're going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, is this your first submission to the Urban Action Expo? Yes, it is. It's my first one to this film festival, but I've I've submitted to a few other ones, and this particular um, script seems to be getting you know a lot of of you know attention. Okay. So, yes, and then you know they've given me a lot of feedback too. Yeah. So you know, especially when you pitch and they'll tell you, well, maybe you should do this and maybe, so I, I did rewrite it. You know, I did rewrite the ending of it and uh, because it was better than what I thought. So to have professionals to give you that advice, I mean, it is, it's valuable advice and it makes you, um, it, it, it makes you a better person, a better writer, um, a better creator. So I'm just happy at that. Mm -hmm. And just thank you all so much too. <laughs> When you called and I was like, hey, you want to interview me? So, you know, that, I, I yeah. do not take it for granted. I appreciate you all so much. Absolutely. Yes. All we need is an outlet. Yeah. We, um, Gotta be plugged in. we have been, um, we've been going to the Urban Action Showcase for the last three or four years. Four years. Uh, and we never have done this before. We just we just we started, just started this started talk this. show. Actually, my, my husband just started this talk show during the quarantine. Mm -hmm. So several months ago, because he was bored, he was he wasn't working. And he's like, you know what? We know a lot of people. Let's connect everyone because this is a time where a lot of people are struggling for that connection with people. So he started this and and then um, so maybe June or July, we started doing this and then uh, it all came about when when we interviewed Demetrius, he said, hey, you know, we've got all these talented people on. Do you guys want to interview them? And, you know, 15 I, emails I later, you know, we have tons of guests on this week. So uh, we appreciate you guys taking the time to to come on and, and talk to us, talk to the viewers. OK, so Dwayne, let me ask you about the, the martial art background. Hmm. Oh, well, um, as a fellow uh, martial artist, <laughs> to another. Uh, um, yeah, my uh, my beginnings were in Shotokan, Okinawa oh. Shotokan, and my teacher I actually reconnected with. I was so happy to finally reconnect with him. His name is Shihan Grant Campbell, and um, I believe he also came to the showcase and expo um, in the past. But uh, yeah, he, he was my first experience in uh, karate, and um, after um, a while I got into some Muay Thai. Um, okay. I never went professional, <laughs> but that's, that's okay. uh, but just practiced and um and became familiar with with all the techniques. So uh, um, that's basically my extent. And I also was in the military, so I did a lot of you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 I understand that. Do, how long did you have to train for the uh, the choreography and things like that? Uh, well, I've always had some excited things that I wanted to do with when it came to the um choreography uh the thing is is that uh when you do films like this you always gotta worry about people's safety so i had to turn it down tone it down a little mm -hmm. bit because not everyone is willing to go mm -hmm. as hard as i'm <laughs> gonna go <laughs> uh for certain things so safety was paramount and i'm glad to say that everybody uh there was no injuries and no um anything that that occurred on set so that was paramount yeah we were talking to <laughs> well to you can say this time hand, to Tom yeah. hand uh um on tuesday i believe it was or wednesday and, and i said i looked at it i said they're hitting for real yeah yeah and in, in his film uh shadow boxer and they were he said they, they were, were going like 80 90 percent i'm like oh. yeah that's how that's exactly how i like to go um there's a guy wow. named um one of the actors ryan shaw he was uh uh, the guy that played Floyd in uh, the film, uh, mm -hmm. me and him, when we, because I usually set days aside so that we could practice outside before we shot, 
And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, me and him, he, he's a military person as well. So me and him are of the same mindset. So when you see us uh, going at it, that was my partner, my sparring partner in the film. And, oh, and okay. uh, we, were, we were actually, you know, contacting a lot. So because wow. that's good. We were of the same mindset with that. Ties you out though. So that's okay. I I did a movie where I was flying about. <laughs> I'm only five five, but I was flying about six foot. And oh, then, God. I, oh. And yeah, was, I know. No, no mask, no nothing. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes that's it, you know what it is. I think we all were inspired by people like Jackie Chan who just went in and did it even though he got injured and, and, and all sorts of things. So, you know, and, and the Tom Cruises and all the people who actually really make it sell it and make it look real on film. Cause um, those are the types of stuff I like. I, I'm really not a fan of the, the blur technique where they're just blurring and you're seeing punches fly, but you don't see right, anything right. really going on and you're supposed right, to insinuate. Right. So uh -oh. I like the Donnie Yen. I like the, you know, those types of things, the Michael Jai White, you know, all those people. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. So I have a question for you. What do you have um, coming, up, coming next? up next? Teresa, you wanna? Oh, I'm sorry. Were you, cause it's like an echo. I didn't yeah. hear you. What do you have coming up next? Well, I have uh, several, uh, several scripts that I'm just trying to rotating or entering into the um the film festivals so and i'm just just writing just continue to write and what i want to do is write outside my genre because i only write what i know and people always say to write what you know and i mm -hmm. have but it's good to 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 discover other genres and other other lifestyles um you know and i'm just listening to you all with the martial arts and i never you know thought about anything like that even though i watch it but then how do you because you're you're telling me you know the technical part of it and i would never know that and i would have to study it but i think it would be interesting to study something like that to know it and to write um to start to write about it so that's what mm -hmm. i'm starting to do now is to just cross over into other areas yeah. um yeah it, it just it just helps you to hone your craft and just to be uh, have a I, I guess you can open your mind to other things and not just be in this one box. Mm -hmm. Like right now, I can write all about the black experience. I can write all mm -hmm. about me and going to school and my family living in Atlanta or whatever the case may be. Um, but I don't know anything about maybe someone who lives in Alaska or martial arts or what are their experiences. So though, that's, that's the next thing that I'm gonna do because I've written um, about four or five scripts now that are circulating. So um it's um nicole c king of new york um delicious and her jezebel spirit um i have one called um chin so and all of them have some type of positive meaning at the end now i can tell you they are real because it's, it's real um situations that happen in life and things that i've seen or heard or whatever like Dwayne was saying you can look in the news and you can see these things that are happening but then i put um the positive spin on like you don't it doesn't have to be this way just because it is mm -hmm. so those are type of movies or scripts i like to write something that make you think but then think about changing your life also teresa did yeah. you find yourself writing more during the, the the quarantine i sure did i just in fact i i dusted <laughs> i had to go and dust off the area where i write and um and it just it just started to come back and then i said i said let, and then i started to write about the quarantine but i did a series of um just little encouragement lessons on that that i do a bible study so that's what started that so i started words of encouragement every wednesday and so i and that was something different i hadn't done before mm -hmm. so that started my my writing going yeah and i just want to give you credit teresa like People don't know how hard, well, it was hard for me just to write. <laughs> so the fact that you do it, I give you a lot of credit because I know, uh, man, that, <laughs> that is a skill. That is a, that is a, a very Thank good you. skill. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, lots of credit to you. Um, I, um, I'm an actor first. I want you know to focus on that, uh, even though my background um, started off in production. I used to work at NBC and MSNBC and Oxygen Network when it first started. 
So mm -hmm. I used to pick up a little things from there and, and, you know, behind the scenes have always interested me. Uh, so I've helped, been helping a lot of people with their projects, but you know, now I kind of really want to uh, focus on doing stuff in front of the, ca um, the camera and yeah. action is, you know, to me where it's at. Um, so I, I have a few um, other uh, things coming up where it's more drama, but I'm looking to see if I can get into more um, action uh, things. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I also uh, do this as well to promote the Dr. Walter Kite Memorial Foundation, which is okay. a, uh, a not-for-profit that started in 2013 where we give scholarships to kids who, um, you know, who are in need within uh, the New York area and, and um, in, in other states as well. So um, mm -hmm. it's facebook.com WK Foundation, um, if you'd like to, mm -hmm. to donate to them. Mm -hmm. And they've been giving out scholarships and, and helping kids to complete college. That is awesome. Okay, that's awesome. And we're going to have really that. Awesome. We're going to put that up on, on, on the video. Yeah. Well, um, say Announce that again one more time, Dwayne, the name of that not-for-profit. Uh, that's the Dr. Walter A. Kite Memorial Foundation. On Facebook, it's facebook.com slash WK uh, Memorial Foundation. And uh, yeah, they've been doing it since 2013. Um, you'll see on the, the Facebook, you know, kids who have benefited it. But you know, during this time, it's, it's kind of crazy with school and, and everything but yeah any help that you can um give that not for profit would be definitely appreciated i love okay, that facebook.com slash um wk memorial foundation or you could just put in dr walter a kite memorial foundation and in the google and you know, you'll see the facebook pop up. okay i just want to make sure that we post that correctly um, you know, if, people... if not, will you let us know. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Dwayne oh. Park, Teresa. Oh, go, go ahead. This yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get two of these for you guys. So you know, I appreciate you guys a lot. So um, awesome. you know, when you're working out, when you when you break that new record, uh, you know that new plank record, I need you to be wearing. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. when, when you, you know. <laughs> it was super cool. So, I'll do yeah. it. <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining us on Talk tonight. let's stay in touch please keep us posted and yes. if you guys have something new and you want to come back on shoot us an email and we'll bring you back on and uh, I, so I, much. i'll give you my address so you can send me that shirt <laughs> yes yes <laughs> <Get my email. laughs> no two two i got two for both of mm -hmm. y'all because i see i see both of y'all i see both of you guys in, in doing all those uh yoga things or whatever you know, I'm very impressed by people by with people that do things that I can't do, and so, <laughs> so you know, you know, even with the writing, Teresa. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. That's awesome. Yes. Um, what was I going to say? I don't know. You were going to say something. <laughs> yeah, good? yeah. I I could teach you how to do that. It's no big deal. Uh oh. Oh, oh yeah. I'll, I'll take you up on that offer. I need I need something new for my Instagram. So I can, oh. <laughs> <laughs> as you said that's awesome yes yes yeah i'm looking forward to um your next project just let us know yes you guys keep us posted thank you will do thank you so much okay. good to see all of you yes thank you guys thank you. All right. have a good night. Good, good, night. good night good luck good night thanks you too okay, okay. uh that's wonderful. I, I got the information for the foundation. So, you know, yeah, that's, we'll make sure we post that. That's very honorable. You know, for all those people with a giving heart and that want to give and help the kids. I love that. Hmm. What time is old Nesca is coming up? One minute ago. Uh, let's see who's coming up next. Hmm. Um, do we have Robert Husted? Robert Husted. Yeah. Lost treasure yes. of the valley. Yes. Um. Mhm. Mm yes. So, um, Dwayne's film is called Vex. Mhm. Mm it won uh, 
for best urban action in the new media category. It is in film block 16, you guys. Film block 16. Mm -hmm. Teresa is a script writer. Her script was called Nikosi, King of New York. Uh, it was nominated in a screenplay category in the screenplay contest. Uh, so that, that's what block it was in. But you, so that that's just the screenplay. So you cannot see that as of yet. But please make sure once we post their social media handles that you guys follow them so you can see their upcoming projects and, you know, see these awesome people in there. You know, especially the script writers who don't have the projects done yet. I'm, uh -huh. I'm, I'm really anxious to see that. Yeah, I've got to see those movies. Yes, Connected. please post the info. Absolutely, Daryl. Oh, yeah. They're, Absolutely. They're and moves. actually, um, tomorrow is the final day. But I believe you can see the films for how long is it? Well, you know, the, I want to say 30 days, but I'll, I'll double check that um, before we say that. But I but you guys will have tonight. You'll have tomorrow. Yeah. If you get a chance, buy the whole black, you know, uh, yeah. because this is twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah, and you've watched about two hundred and ninety nine movies. Probably, yeah. you know, as much as I had time for. <laughs> uh, well, all all the guests that we had, mm -hmm. I had to watch the movie because I I, I wanted to be familiar. Yeah, with. yeah. And uh, and I went I watched Tainted Getaway. That's one of the guests we're supposed to have tonight. Um, and also watch Lost Treasure. Yeah, and this is, I just, I, we got an email from Robert, so I'm just making sure that he knows. Come in now. Um, to click on the link. So, how's everybody out there doing? I hope you're watching these movies. There are some good movies. You, you know, you could take a whole family, and you would um, um you would pay more than than what it is to watch these movies. You know, you go to watch one movie, you spend uh, more money watching one movie with your whole family than than this. And and I watch. Yeah, my eyes are hurting from staying yeah, up so late yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> but and, and Dwayne's movie had a lot of action in it. Mm -hmm. You know, from that's, the beginning, right it was alley. like, yeah. Well, it was more than just the, the beginning was very like, oh, goodness gracious, like, I can't believe that happened. Oh, Robert so we are, is here. Robert, Robert is here. Is here. Hey, we're going to bring you on right, right in. Yeah, we're going to get you right in there. If for Hi, no Robert. other reason, just because the clip art is super cool. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it was um, it was our, my first experience making something with a dragon. So I wanted the clip art to be awesome. Oh, <laughs> okay. so how are you, Robert? Uh, I'm, I'm great. How are you guys? You guys are on the East Coast, right? Yeah, on the East Coast. I'm yeah. I, I'm an East Coaster. I grew up in Connecticut, and uh, I mm -hmm. lived in New York for many years. I actually worked at MTV back when they used to show music videos. So oh. uh, that's how that's 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 how old I am. And I'm calling in from North Hollywood, so uh, definitely, oh. yeah, but definitely missing the East Coast. And uh, I wish, yeah, I mean, I can't wait for next year. I hope uh, the Urban yeah. Action yeah, Fest is live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel like everywhere you're the second guest we've had from Connecticut, and I feel like everywhere in Connecticut <laughs> it's power too much. Yeah, <laughs> it, that's what I was trying to explain to everybody on the West Coast is that the West Coast is weird because in movies they make it seem like it's this like like if you watch like a Michael Mann movie, like if you watch like Collateral, it's like it all seems like it's this one big city, but it's so <laughs> not. It's all these like disconnected little parts. The East Coast. Um, in some ways, it's almost like it's it's even more severe. It's like Connecticut is like the suburbs, and New York is you know the the warriors basically. Like that's how I think of you know New York, and that's how it felt like when I was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a very good way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I watched your movie that was in, in Black Tor Thirteen, I believe. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I watched I watched it a couple of times actually. Oh my God! Thank you so much. Multiple viewings. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, right. 
when I was trying <laughs> to figure out, you know, you know, I don't want to give away anything, but um, where the guard was, <laughs> it was an interesting movie. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was. Um, I so I uh, oh, and your question was what the like who who the who the guardian was? Was that what you were? No, I know who the guard. Yeah, so yeah. what the guardian was? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, basically I came up with the idea when I moved to Los Angeles without a car. So, you know, having a car in LA is like, it's like living in, you know, Mad Max Fury Road without a car. It's like, every, it's a car culture. So everybody has a car. And, um, I would just took the bus for the first few years that I was out here. And one thing that I started to notice is that there's just abandoned shopping carts everywhere in los angeles it's like it's like a, it's like you're going through this like uh, ocean of like it's like napoleonic warships that are just everywhere like destroyed for for no reason like and i couldn't really figure it out and i started thinking about wouldn't it be funny to make a photo book about all these abandoned shopping carts because i thought it seems like something like andy warhol would really think right, right. was deep and meaningful and then I thought it might be funnier to make a movie about somebody making a pretentious photo book about shopping cart and if they led to a treasure that was guarded by a dragon. So it kind of all came out of that. Like it started out as a little bit opportunistic. And then I thought, no, this could be like a, like a fun, like, you know, homage to all the 80s movies that I grew up with. So right, right. Um, <laughs> that's what I saw, when I saw the clip art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it was very interesting, um, especially mm -hmm. it, start, it started out like the black and white, you know, and then I like, what am I watching? <laughs> <laughs> then, then it turned into this movie that I, I, I got to watch this again. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much. That's so nice. Um, uh, yeah, the black and white portion was actually inspired by so there's a lost movie from 1984 that you can find it if you go on torrent sites and stuff, but it's uh, a movie that uh, Bill Murray is in it, Dan Aykroyd is in it. It's like an SNL movie. It's called Nothing Lasts Forever, and it, oh, okay. was, it was made in the early 80s, but it was shot in black and white, and it's supposed to look like, it's supposed to look like a 1930s movie set in the future. And uh -huh. when when I was trying to think of a way to like sort of start the story of the movie, I thought it might be fun to have bookends that were set in the future with flying cars, like in the future of the valley. <laughs> and then the whole thing is a flashback. And I was like, oh, cool. It'll give it like a Wizard of Oz type feel. At least that's what the intention was. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, when we were filming that stuff, the DP was he, he was he was great. He was just like, oh, great. We'll light it for black and white. But it, it took a little, like a few people were just like, it, it, like you're shooting it in black and white, but it takes place in the future. And I was like, no, no, it, it'll work. It'll sort of make sense. It'll, it'll, you know. It make sense. Yeah. It make sense. <laughs> I'm so, so glad. It was nominated and won yeah. for best visual effects. That best is visual pretty effects. Cool. Yeah. 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 I was so, yeah, I was so happy about that because our VFX artists, we actually had two. And the, especially the second VFX artist who did a lot of the finishing work, just sort of making sure everything moved smoothly and stuff like that. We have a hidden temple and I had never done a VFX movie before. So I didn't realize if you're placing objects in a movie and they're not real and the camera's moving, you have to track all of that. Like you have to make sure that it tracks with the motion of the camera. So that was, that was a big process. Oh just, my gosh, yeah. It was, I mean, yeah, I was like, oh great, we'll just set up a green screen and it'll be perfect. And it's like, no, you need to like give that fake thing, whatever it is, um, it, you have to apply the same rules to it that are applied to all the other objects in the oh. scene. So it was a really big education, but it was, um, yeah, we were so grateful to win Best VFX because I really, really wanted to hand my, my uh, my VFX artist uh, like an award, so it's so that was that was really wonderful, and it was an honor just to be nominated too. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. H have you ever been to the um, live urban action? 
No, I, and you know what the worst part is? I think I, 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 when I was living, when I was still living in the city, I, I can't remember how many years it's been going on for. But I moved out here in 2010, so I wasn't sure if urban action has been going on for that long. But my first thought was, I wish I knew about this when I lived in New York because it would have been right up my alley. I mean, I'm just like a lifelong action movie fan, so I wish that I, I wish I'd known about it because I, I would have gone. But I hope to go next year when. Uh, the world isn't a bizarre sci-fi movie where we're all in quarantine and stuff. You gotta <laughs> so. write about it then. The world yeah. is a bizarre sci-fi movie. You know, I know, right? It is. It totally is. <laughs> I think this might be the seventh or eighth year for Earth. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know what's funny is I think because of all of this happening, it's going to be even bigger. I think so too. I, I the, the vibe that I've gotten from festivals that went virtual this year yeah. is that it ended up, I think it's going to be a really great like promotional uh, vehicle mm -hmm. for the live show the following year because all the ones that we did were virtual were um, like, especially Urban Action, they were all amazing and it just, it made me want to be there in person even more. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. it's going to have a really great side effect of just even getting more people to fly in that maybe weren't uh, local, you know, for next year. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to do live because now everyone's like, oh, yeah, I hope we could go next year. I'm excited to do live interviews next year. Oh, my gosh. I'm sure. Wow. Like, is it, 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 it especially with like, I mean, I, I don't know. It seems like it, there's always at least one or two technical difficulties that like with with people signing into stuff. So I'm sure like you guys will be so happy to have like to not have that hurdle anymore. Of just like, here's a <laughs> microphone here. You just talk about your movie and we're in person. So. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I, I had mentioned to our two previous guests how my husband started this during the quarantine, and we oh. were doing it strictly through Facebook Live. And oh. sometimes you can get in, sometimes you can't. And we're oh like, click, yeah. click the little man guy <laughs> next to the like symbol. I know. And then <laughs> I heard about StreamYard, and I tested it out. I'm like, this is the funniest thing. It's easier. Do this, send them a link, and they click right in. The, right. The, the, this this was done so well. There was one that I did for, I forget where the festival was, and I probably don't even want to say their name because I'd feel bad, but it was almost like you. everybody signed in, and then they found out the day of that they had to, like, create an account, create a password, and it was like everything was delayed because everybody was like, oh, we didn't realize that we had to oh like, download an app. So, yeah, I mean, just in terms of, like, how well everything's gone, like, the mm -hmm. Urban Action Fest has had, like, and you guys in particular, it's been the precision of an action movie. It's like like a oh, Tony Jaw cool. film. Like, those hits have been landing. It's been great. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's been really cool. And everybody that I've told about the fest, they're like, there's actually, like, an Urban Action Fest? That's, that's awesome. Because, you know, the festivals are really great, but, I mean, typically they're usually more a vehicle for things that are, you know, sort of like about social issues and socially redeeming stuff, which is great. You can have both that and action, but I'm like, where's all the action festivals? So this this was like finding a a, a, a huge pool of water in the in the desert for a thirsty <laughs> thirsty filmmaker. So thank you. I love that. I love that. <laughs> How did you get into filmmaking? So uh, I guess I well I went to I actually went to NYU film school. Oh, I was okay. lucky enough to go, and we actually got to cut on 16 millimeter film on flatbed editors, which was like mm -hmm. super cool. Just to get, to, I think we were the last class that did that, and getting to like just you know it was really dorky, but it was like getting to smell the film and like do the tape edits and stuff. Um, it was a blast, but I mean, I guess to be honest, it was just, you know, my folks showing me movies when I was a kid and I was really fortunate because they kind of skewed my perspective on what a big, huge, high concept movie is. So when I was really young, they showed me a movie called Inner Space, which is like a crazy 80s movie with Martin Short and Dennis Quaid. It's kind of like oh, fantastic. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, and very kind of weird, and it's like a, it's basically, it's like a cult movie. I mean, it's like something that you would see, like, like a Roger Corman movie back in the 70s, but they had a budget for it, and I, I know the director actually came out of Roger Corman movies, but my folks would show me movies like that, but they wouldn't say that they weren't box office hits. They would just be like, this is inner space. And, and then I found out later, it was not a huge mainstream hit. Like, people liked it, but, so I kind of grew up wanting to make stuff that was like, very action-packed, but also kind of very like left to center. Um, another 
big movie was uh, a movie called Repo Man, which was like oh, yeah. uh, early. And I remember seeing that on TV as a kid, and I'm like, this is this this just feels like it's they made this for five dollars, and it's it's it's, it's, it's <laughs> you know. So. Yeah, like they made it for no money, but it's this amazing movie. And then um, when I got into film school, I started seeing like all these other movies that were just completely outside the box. I remember one of the coolest filmmaking experience, or film going experiences was I took a vampire class at, at NYU. So they actually had a class where they just showed nothing but vampire films. And it was in that class that I saw a movie called Ganja and Hess, which is this totally independent um uh vampire film from the 70s and it's uh i mean i i can't think of a way to describe it other than it it's it's just a very independent vision i think it's it's like one of the most unique uh you know films i've ever seen and so it just you know that and just you know growing up with action movies just made me you know and then finding out that there's actually action movies that are like critically acclaimed like you know the <laughs> wild bunch and stuff like that right um but um uh yeah, I mean, I guess it was just, it was an evolving process over the years. And I just, I, it's just so cool to find out that there's such a huge community of filmmakers that yeah. are interested in that, yeah. so. <laughs> That's one of the best things is, you know, finding others like you and like-minded. And so I think that's pretty cool. And, you know, mm. when you do things like this, and even though it's virtual, mm -hmm. you know, um, because one of the ladies we had on the other day, she actually stayed in the studio to listen to the other um, interviews that we did, and she ended up connecting, she ended with, up someone, connecting with somebody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I've been trying to do that too for the ones that like we've been fortunate enough to be accepted into, because it seems like it really is like just a community of people that are just like, people just want to make stuff now. I think people are hungry to see stuff and make stuff. And, yeah. Um, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, my my day job is that I work in localization at uh, Netflix. So it's all the subtitling and all the it's basically all the stuff that you need to make a movie, you know, viewable in other countries. And mm -hmm. um, it's like the demand hasn't stopped one iota for content. Um, oh, cool. People are consuming it like crazy. So it's I think it bodes well for next year when I think everybody's going to kind of like rub their eyes and be like, OK, yeah. we're mm -hmm. back out. Now we're going to start yeah. making stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rob, we thank you for coming on. It's Rob Husted, Lost Treasure of the Valley, Film Block 13. You guys, you know we will be posting the link yeah. in this video when we post it, so you guys can click on that. Like Pedro said earlier, buy the the whole yeah, buy the whole thing. Buy the, the whole, whole thing. thing. Just binge watch movies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the the other movies are fantastic. So yeah, this is like the coolest fest we've played in the best block we've been in. So. I would highly recommend that to everybody. <laughs> thank you for having me. This was so nice. Oh, thank, on, you Rob. For, thank you for coming on. And, yeah. and let us know when you do your next project. Mm -hmm. Just send us an email and yeah. we promote it. We'll have you back on. Oh, thank you so much. I can't wait. This has been awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Awesome. Okay. Have a good awesome. night, Rob. You too. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. That was great. Yeah. So that was Rob Husted, Lost Treasure of the Valley. Nominated and won Best VFX, mm -hmm. Visual Effects, Film Block 13. Uh, right now, we are going to bring in, let's let's use his American name because I will mess up his, his, his actual first name. Bryce Wang from the film The Shell in the feature film block. Let's bring him in right now. Hi, how are you? Hi, how nice are to you? See you? How are you doing? Good to see you. Me too, me too. Welcome to the exciting Talk. moment. Yes, we were had a little bit of a balancing act, but we managed to work it out. <laughs> so welcome. Yeah, yeah. Well, your your movie, The Shell. Yes. I I, I wish that movie was real. Now. <laughs> really? <laughs> so I could have that little thing, you know. And <laughs> with this pandemic, yeah, you need something like that now. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So Bryce, tell us a little bit about the shell and what was your inspiration for making the film? Uh, yeah, the the things like the shell is basically like a uh, overall it looked like a revenge story, but actually the main goal I try to tell people is trying to get over your revenge to follow you with truly inside your heart and then just pursue what's real for you, not mm -hmm. something that happened. That Even somebody is always trying to stop you. 
And also yeah. the reason I create that kind of like the, the show concept, we're trying to kind of like go for a metaphor and saying that in our in like in our life there's always a shell. You just have to mm -hmm. break it out to find wow. more. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I got it even more now that you said that. <laughs> you know, I thought I understood it. Now that you said that, yeah, it's a lot deeper. That this is a movie that you need to watch a couple of times, right? Yeah, I hope so. But there's, I mean, there's few things I would like to express more in the movie, but you know, I don't have that much budget to extend the movie. So, mm -hmm. so um, how did you come up with the with the idea? Besides what you just told us, uh, the idea is more like, you know, I just want to film something something more accessible in my level so i oh. think oh, okay i like action movie i watch godfather so uh, let me see maybe something similar to that and then because my first draft was like like just complete like godfather that kind of film and then mm -hmm. i changed it feel like maybe it needs to be more fun like more in this generation so i add right. a little bit of a science fiction element in there so it's like a, it's a process it's not something i just came up with <laughs> <laughs> right, right. How long have you been a, a filmmaker? Uh, I would say five years. Five years. Five years. That that movie looks really good for five years. <laughs> no, uh, I would say like five years. I mainly count as like I, I spent three years in school, start from yeah. scratch, and then spent two years making that movie. The start on the third year. Where, oh, okay, okay. Where did you study? Uh, the Los Angeles Film School. Okay. Oh, nice, nice. Um, so tell us about, um, we were trying to get on the actor. How do you pronounce his first name? Is it Peter? Uh, yeah, his first name is Petrie, actually. Petrie. Petrie. Okay, Petrie. Yeah. Uh, so he won Best Actor in a Feature Film, so I know you have to be really proud of that. You know, it's part of your yeah. work. Um, <laughs> we, so we were trying to work that out, but apparently he's back home he's in europe he said right yeah he said because the, you know there was a funny thing is like you know the actor we had performing his father in in, in the in yes. the show that guy the, he i think both of them last night i met them they, they were saying they were filming another feature film for another project and then oh. they're in europe right now but it's a completely different project is not not related to anybody but just they are playing son and father again it's like very funny things. That is too funny. Um, so hold on one second. Petrie. So his name is Petrie Willink, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. We just wanted to make sure that we give him a shout out and tell him congratulations on winning best actor in a feature film. So is this your first? Um, is this your first submission to a film festival? Uh. This is my first feature film, and then I submit to many festivals. So this okay. is one of the first. Okay. And uh, how did you find Urban Action Showcase? Was that the yeah, question uh, you were going to ask? Go ahead. Yeah. How did you find Urban <laughs> Action Showcase to, to submit to? Actually, I found like a, I was searching festival. I found there is a good website called Film Freeway. So there's like a, a lot of festivals. <laughs> yeah. That's what everybody's saying. Yeah, that seems to be the, the, the answer that everyone gives, gives Film Freeway, right? How did you book the, the actors? Um, mm -hmm. Oh, actually, I found like, you know, in America, LA is like an amazing website. So, backstage and oh, LA yeah. casting, those a lot of websites. So, it's very, I just posted and then they, they came for interview. Ah, like okay. audition, audition. Audition. Yeah. So, you went through like the whole casting projects, doing projects, doing auditions and, and, you know, choosing the right actor. You went through the whole process, huh? Yes, yes. Wow. You, you know what's funny? There's this show that I wanted to be on, and I've been trying to get on this show. And um, for some reason, <laughs> I couldn't get on the show. And I was watching it, and I saw Petrit there. Really? Okay. You know the show that I want to get into? I don't want to mention the name because um, I'm still trying to get into the show. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. And he was playing Harry Potter. <laughs> really? Oh. Yeah, I, I, I did watch his real, a lot of his real, he has like some like a Scottish style and also, I don't know, that's kind of like a <laughs> A kind of style, also some England style. 
Yeah, so they were trying to say which one is uh, the real Harry Potter. Oh, oh, okay, I know what show you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, <laughs> that's fine. So then when I saw your, uh, you know, the casting, I said, oh, that's him. That is so funny. I got to talk to him. I want to know how to get on that show. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> what do you have coming up next? Uh, right now I'm like in, currently I, 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 I moved back to China and I'm doing some animation project. I'm trying to make some oh. animation that's a little more maybe cultural mm -hmm. to China and then spread to the world because I realized Right now, the world has a difficulties to understand mm -hmm. what's Chinese culture besides food. And the yeah. Chinese filmmaker inside here has trouble and also lack of confidence to, to spread the culture in a way that people can understand outside of the country. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to play some animation. So right, right now, I'm actually, actually, I'm leaving a hotel doing some location scout to, for the nature and mm -hmm. some kind of like a Temple. Right. Wow. Uh, how do you pronounce your first name? Yue Hua. Yue Hua. Awesome. Yes, you pronounce it very well. What what way show EDR? Oh yeah. <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> you know a little bit. What you know, the funny thing is like is hmm? sorry? What show that Buha? Uh but I can understand. <laughs> 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 I mean, my name gave my my, my professor like a, a lot of hard time because we're, we're a monthly class from the very first month to the end. Every mm -hmm. every time a new professor have to figure out how to pronounce my name. Like right. it's almost like a joke for every oh. single month. It will, oh, so yeah. So they try to make it difficult. Yeah. Listen, I feel your spirit yeah <laughs> thank you yeah because i i see what you're trying what you're trying to do and that's that's great mm -hmm. because you have like a spiritual side to it oh. mm. like you're teaching a lesson thank you. I love that. you know i teach tai chi mm. and, yeah and, and that's what you were saying before you know about this chinese culture mm -hmm. You know that some you know I studied with Yang Yin Ming, and, and yeah. uh, a lot mm -hmm. of people do misunderstand the culture. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that you're trying mm -hmm. to do something like that. Yeah, yeah, because I, I feel like through animation there's like a simplicity with it, so people tend to grasp yeah. it a little bit easier, a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, I think that I think that's amazing. That is awesome. Is there anything that's coming up with you besides this movie? Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more, I'm more project based. Okay. 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 Besides, the, yeah. All right. How are you? How's your day? Hmm? Great. How's your day being doing the interview? Oh, no, yeah. Great, great, very great. Good. We had a very busy week. Very busy week. Yeah. We usually, um, we cut down to one show. Mm -hmm. And then because of this, now we did four shows this week. <laughs> four shows, Ooh. 20 guests, something 20 like that. 15 guests or something like that. But we managed to work it out because we wanted to make sure we gave everyone time to come in and talk about their project, which I think is really mm. important, you know? Yeah, yeah it is. Very so, fun. It's my, actually, this is my first actually interview. What? Oh, it is? Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Thank you. That you're welcome. Awesome. That is pretty awesome. Pleasure. Yeah, the other people should be contacting you. I, I hope. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Bryce, do you have any social media that we can note when we post this video? Uh, I have Instagram account. Like, what's my name? Let me see. I'm not so <laughs> sure what's my name. What is your name on Instagram? <laughs> yeah, I'm not so sure. <laughs> I don't use it much. Just why that one 2018? Because I made that account 2018. Oh, okay. You you could mail it to us too, and then we I got it. We put it so so you could get a following for your movies. Yeah. Well, okay. 2018. Yeah. Why dot w a n g 2018? Oh, okay. Why dot w a n g 2018. 
And that is his yes. Insta. All right, we got it. And tell Petri I want to talk to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm trying to reach out to him, get a video, but I think he's probably busy because he's actually filming right now. So right. he he can send that to us anytime, and we would love to to post it. This interview will be available on YouTube, so we will send you the link once it's completed, just in case we have to do any type of editing to the video. Um, and then you can feel free to share it wherever. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Bryce, thank for you coming much. on. Have a great night and good luck to you. You too. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> okay. There we so, go. Okay. That that was an interesting movie. You gotta catch it. The whole thing. Well, mm -hmm. So um yeah, it's like um like you said, a shell. Yeah. It's like the war is in the shell. Mm. And people were trying to well, get I out. Love, so. I love how he, he explained it. I yeah. think it was yeah, yeah. And I'm glad we I'm, have that I'm, on video so we could watch it again. Yeah, that, I'm very, very intrigued. Intrigued. Very, very intrigued. We wanted to that. We we want to, we want to continue to do multiple guests. Right, and, and then I, we're gonna have Rohan Patrick on that day too. Oh, so he confirmed. He's an, he's an artist. So yeah, yeah, that was what the phone call was about. But I couldn't get um, this from Down Under. <laughs> Yeah, Australia. The Down Under. Yeah. That is an accident that accent that I have not mastered. British, mm -hmm. I feel like, is a bit easier, and it's quite normal for mm -hmm. me to just go into a Brit, uh, uh, an English accent every now and then. Mm -hmm. um, but I find that doing an Australian accent is a bit harder, so mm -hmm. I've got to keep practicing and things like that. So anyway, yeah. That wow. happens from time to time. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, she, thank she you. does. She does switch it up once in a while. Yeah. I'm happy to announce that my wife is going back to work on a film. Um, yeah. Nothing makes her happier than being on set. Yeah, it's been a it's been a long stretch. It's yeah. been too too long. I I have been um, doing a lot of voiceover. I talked about that before, and you know, recording under the table, recording mm -hmm. in the closet, and. But I'm looking forward to getting back onto set. I'm not looking forward to um, having a COVID test, but that is necessary. Mm -hmm. So I'll be doing that. I want to say congratulations to Charles that his book is being released in December. I don't have the date. Charles Marinero? Yes. His book that is, is pretty being released. awesome. So I want to say Well, we're probably going to have to have him back on to yeah. talk about that book. <laughs> he lives right around the corner. He just could come in. <laughs> He lives around the corner from us? No. no oh, uh, I was like, does he? Well, anyway, you know, uh, Daryl, since he's still there, I, I hope he's still there. Uh, because I do want to bring you in one day because I want you to talk talk about um, people that are afraid of flying. You mean like the fly? No, people that are afraid of flying in, in, in planes. He, he actually talks about that. Okay. Yeah. You because... know what? We could have him on the same day as we have Barbara Malinowski. Remember, we were supposed to have her on. Yes. And she has... Yeah. We but could I, do I that. think she has. We have to coordinate it. Yeah. Together. Yeah. We should definitely do that. Yeah. We should definitely. And we also have two or three um, filmmakers that we still need to bring on. So we'll probably do that not this coming Monday, but the following Monday. Great. Daryl is still here. <laughs> Isn't that nice of him? Okay, yeah. So you're here. He said he would love to help. Yeah, yeah. We we could bring you in and talk about because you will help people that that have that fear of flying. My daughter being one of them. Hmm. I don't know how to get that message off. Which one? <laughs> any this other, one. Any other? Oh, look, voila! Oh, I can speak French too. Yeah. You should have spoke French before. How, how did you like my Chinese? It's been a long time since I spoke Chinese. Um, it was it was great. <laughs> I kind of surprised him. Yes, you did. You did. <laughs> kind of you surprised did. him. It, it always throws people off when I start speaking Chinese because they don't expect it. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, oh, that was Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> you okay. guys, thank you for joining us. We are hoping yes. that next year, 
um, when November rolls around, which is when the showcase is, we're hoping that we will be able to live stream some of these interviews so you mm -hmm. guys can see that do do some stuff on location i think that would be really on cool. location yeah because this is yeah. live we are live right now mm -hmm. on location right at amc 25 in manhattan in times square it's it's beautiful there you go and the lights are just oh, it's beautiful yes it's beautiful you, you can't miss it you got to do it at least once when we return back to normal Okay, so Daryl, you're still there. We're going to say good, good night. Adios. We're going to say. Te veo. <laughs> si me lo dice, te lo creo. Hey. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining Love, us live on Twitter. Love, peace, and harmony. Yeah. Love, peace, and harmony. Peace out. Bye-bye.